Hello, uh, we are going to talk about Arduino programming today. And before we uh, start to take that uh, Arduino IDE, uh, the software that we are working with, I'm going to talk a little bit, little bit about Arduino, the whole concept of Arduino. Um, excuse me, fly right now. Okay, so now, yeah, that's enough. Okay, uh, Arduino is an open source hardware and software, and it's a, for, for PubLab, it's a very powerful tool to learn electronics and coding. And we have Arduino boards, and we have many different types of Arduino boards. We have many accessories, like sensors and motors and all kinds of uh, um, hardware to link to, to Arduino. We have the breadboards, and I will show you what that is later. Uh, that is to, be, to, to make uh, different connections to those accessories. The, Ar I, the Arduino IDE, where, it is, where you write your code, and, that's, uh, and that is based on C and C++. So the magic happens here. Where, where you start to code, and uh, and the code will be sent into your Arduino. In in Arduino, we also have libraries, and libraries are, are, are is made to support your code, to support your hardware that you're using, and we will go over that. Then we have the bootloader that starts everything up in your microcontroller. We will talk about that as well. Um, we have, in Arduino commun community, we have uh, support for, uh, to help and get lessons and, and all kinds of uh, code that we can learn. And, and it is a really huge uh, support community. Then uh, Arduino IDE also supports microcontroller, other microcontroller than Arduino, that are, that are in Arduino, like 80, tiny 44 and, and also the new uh, microcontrollers. It's easy to find uh, sketches on the internet, and it's very easy to copy them because we can copy text. It's, uh, some of the smaller sketches are only text that we can copy into the Arduino IDE program and, and work with them. And then we have online Arduino simulation, uh, like in Tinkercad, and we can make a test uh, with online and then they can calculate and, and see how things work out. I encourage you to, to take, a, uh, take a look at this website and take a look at that. Okay. When I talk about different types of Arduino, we have many, many types and this is just a, a small part of it. Uh, the most common in our labs is Uno, Arduino Uno. And we also have uh, Arduino kits. So we have Mecha, we have many more pins here, and, and some uh, Arduino are dressed or made to do uh, only a certain thing. Like this is uh, work with RGB LEDs, and this Lily have uh, a shaped Arduino board. And when we have uh, Mini and Nano, uh, they are really handy if you want to pack it into something really small. And in the Fab Lab, some Fab Labs have uh, a small kit, another have like bigger kits. Um, there are endless possibility to connect things with, with Arduino. And some of them are like wireless, and, and uh, uh, we, you can do a lot of tests with, with Arduino. When you are making boards, you have set, uh, certain, um, what you call it, uh, you, uh, you are making boards after demand, like some boards that you have to make as a, in a, as a final project, you have to make like control motors, uh, make some information on screen, put some information on screen, sense something. And uh, when you're sensing something, you want to respond to, to, to the things that you get and you want to do something. So we have inputs. And this is an is example of inputs, like button and uh, uh, move, uh, this one uh, acknowledge a movement in a room. And we have like 
many, many types of inputs. And we have all, uh, most all, every pin on Arduino can be an input pin and an output pin. Some are digital and some are analog. And we will go through that a little bit. We, we did it a little bit uh, when, when we were, uh, when uh, heavily they went over Arduino. Uh, but like you, you, some inputs are uh, made to, uh, to only be uh, analog and some inputs are made only to be digital. And, and we have outputs as well. So this is a little photo to show how, how that is made. Okay. Um, when you made your Arduino, your hello board, um, then it was uh, a little bit like this. You made a button, and you made uh, and and the button has a pull-up resistor, and then you made a LED in your board and a resistor to protect the LED. And you draw the draw the schematic in Eagle, and you had uh, some pin configuration. So we had like pin number six is for the LED, and we have uh, RX and TX connected to to the to your microcontroller. Some use maybe 80, 20, 44, or some use the new one like uh, 1640, tiny 1640. Okay, uh, then we then you did uh, mill out the board and you made traces. So this is um, uh, somehow your board looks like. Maybe you put two LEDs or not. Uh, but the thing that you're going to do in this week, you are going to make experiments and write code for that board. So you are going to write on code, you push the button and something happens with the LED. And I will show you like few ways to, to work with that. Um, and, uh, when you are working in Arduino, you need to know which uh, pins you will use. And I will show you better in, in the Arduino IDE. Uh, for instance, if we take a look at 80 tiny 44, uh, pin 6 on this uh, sheet, is actually pin 7 in Arduino. And you can see the brown color. Every pin here on the on 80 tiny is brown here, and then you can see the color is 7. So pin 6 is 7, and etc. So take a good look at this sheet when you're working with with your your um, uh, your hello board. Okay. Uh, when we make code in Arduino IDE, we, there is a few things that happen. Uh, it's, that, it's not a very simple uh, uh, what you say, uh, process, but this, this picture will show you a little bit what is going on. You, you make code, you have the C code, the source code, in your, uh, pro, uh, in your uh, Arduino IDE. And what, what the program, when you want to compile it, you need to compile it through this uh, way, and, and you will end up with a hex file, hex data file. Uh, and you're sending bits to the Arduino. So, but on the way, you could be using libraries. And if you're using libraries, that will go in, uh, and, and will, will be implemented in your code. So, like I said before, libraries is is for for you to um, to work to help you with your code. Uh, it's showing a lot of stuff in the background that is um, it's not visible, but the libraries is like working in the background for you for things to work, and it's to support the hardware as well. So uh, the hardware that you are uh, connecting to Arduino will work. Okay. Um, now I'm going to um, show you the program. Um, okay. If we take a look at um, a code that will uh, work for you, um, maybe I will just go to a simple code, more simple code, just very, very simple. Okay. Um, this is uh, as simple as uh, the Arduino code will get. Um, there is a one pin here, 
And you can see in, in the top here, we have an integer or int. That's uh, like a variable that's, that, um, because you need to um, address what pin you are using. Like in this case, in this case, we are using pin number 13. And we want to name it. So we say integer and pin number, uh, pin let, pin let is equal to 13. So we are addressing this pin as pin 13. Okay. We can uh, make this integer a different. We could, like, say, you will see in code like this, um, define. And uh, that will work too, like a an, an no number, just like this. That, that, can, that can work too, but it, uh, there's a difference between integer int and define when you start working later on. Because when, let's imagine as we were uh, making a code and this number will need to uh, change in the code. It could work like this, if we do it this, but it would never work here. So why can we do this? It's, we can, uh, when we are sending the code to Arduino, this thing will take less bits when we're sending to, to, to Arduino. But this one will take a little bit. We are not talking about huge amount of bits, but it will take more bits. Because uh, Arduino can change this number from minus 3,000 3, something to plus 3,000 something. We have a range from, from that, 3,600 or something. OK. Uh, I'm going to talk a little bit more about integers because we need to sign things to this. Um, we could also do another thing called const int. And this is a little bit similar, but it holds this number stuck. But it has uh, a few things that I'm not going to go deeply into. I, I don't want to go too deeply into, in, into things. But you will see this, and this will work uh, in, in your code. Inst constant int define. As this will not work if you're going to change this number in the code itself. OK? Um, and you will see uh, uh, also a uh, float. This is, is um, if you see this integer, uh, then it's because we, you are, we are using numbers, but we are also using numbers like 13, like I say, point zero 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 zero. So it, it has a more range of, of, of numbers to use. So do you understand this? Hello? OK? Yes. <laughs> OK. Um, then I'm going to talk about a little bit of one integer, uh, a string. Uh, string, string, isn't it? I, what I guess, I can't remember. Okay, that, that's, a string is for, is for like words. If we want to make uh, a words that we need to uh, account, a variable, uh, yeah, the word that we need to use in something. I, I, I can show you it later. Okay. This is the, we are dressing this as pen 13, 13. And now we have something called void loop, void setter, sorry. And that, we can think of that as a, a setup when your computer is booting up. This is like a boot up. It's, it's booting up for the first time. It boots up. It's only run this loop once. So, uh, uh, á íslensku er það fall sem er keyrt einu sinni bara að fyrir að uh, fall sem er keyrt einu sinni að var þú í byrjum ok, this is a loop that will drive uh, will, will be booted up once after that we have a void loop and the void loop is always going going through and, and, and again and again and again it's a circle and it, it never stops unless you uh, have something in the code to stop it like we have some loops that you'll be stuck in the loop until something happens 
and then it runs the code. Okay, I am going to talk to you about this here. This is really, really important. We have an integer, something that says that pin 13 is now this name, pin pin let. So everything around this pin is to this called pin let now. So we need to say, because this is only a one let that we are working with, and we are saying pin mode, we, that says start up this pin let as an output. So pin mode will give you that opportunity. Now pin let number 13 is an output. After that, we will be in the loop. And now we need to address a voltage to pin 13. And this is pin, pin let, the name. So we say ticket and write. And pin, pin let 13 is now high. And we will wait for 300 milliseconds. And when that 300 milliseconds is over, we will say pin let is now low. So we turn off the let and we turn on, turn on the let and we turn off the let here. So this is really, really, really simple code. We could also uh, say here analog write. And if we would say that, ana, oh, sorry, analog write. Have to be big. Um, is have to be big. Uh, na, look, what is press arena? So now, analog right. Um, uh, then, then we could use. Okay, when we were using digital right, we were sending five voltage to the pin, or or no voltage. Like here, we are sending no voltage. If we are saying analog right we can send like fake analog signal. It's not a, a real analog. It's a, it's a fake pulse signal. Pull, uh, the digital uh, co computer, uh, the Arduino, sends uh, pulses that looks like analog. And we can uh, use them from zero, that's no, uh, no voltage, to 255 and that is full 5 volts so we could uh, send like from 0 volt to 5 volts and and if we are somewhere in between then then the the let would be like uh, half lit up okay everybody understand this so we have two different ways to send a signal to to the to, to the pins. But there is one thing. In Arduino, uh, not all pins have this uh, fake uh, uh, pulse. Because uh, there is a tilt sign on the... Maybe I can see you. Uh, this is so little. Okay. There is a small tilt sign. You can see it. Very little signs here. That pins can give this fake... If you have a Arduino computer uh, at your... Uh, that's for something. You can see it, that there are tilt signs on them uh, next to the number. And that pin can send this analog uh, uh, yes, signal. Okay, um, now we're going to take a look at code that it looks for, that would work for your um, hello board. Okay, it's very similar. We have pressed a pin on uh, number seven. A let is connected to uh, pin number six. So in Arduino, it's, it's seven, regarding the sheet that we uh, uh, took, took a look at. Okay, now we have something new here. We have serial. Uh, and why do we have serial? It's because we want to, uh, serial port is really, really helpful to find like bugs or trouble or something not working in your board. Also, we can use serials to make input 
we can write in, in serials uh, to start on, uh, start something up in Arduino, or maybe stop something. So here is our serial monitor, and if I click on it, okay, then I uh, this is just a okay. It's, I don't know what is connected here, but that doesn't matter. My port is not connected, but uh, in the ser serial monitor we will get reading what is happening. So um, we have this, when you're working with Arduino, you, you need to only make a serial port here, and then you go to the loop, and you write down what you want to send to your serial port. So in this case, we are like uh, opening a serial port and at this bit rate, this is how... Uh, how fast uh, the serial port talks to your microcontroller. And we have serial port here, hello world, I'm, I'm running. And we are only saying that, hello serial port, I'm running. And then after that, it runs the, the, the loop of turning this LED on and turning this LED off. Okay, I'm going to see if I, I can connect this, if it's, it should be connected. So. Okay. Mm -hmm. 80 times 44. We will go through this, uh, the, the settings. See? Yeah, nice guess, right, turning it off and off again. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Now I can open my serial port, and and if you, if you uh, sorry Willy, yep. uh, if you, if you point how you your camera like how you connect it is it is it through the AT Tiny that you're programming it or or yeah like yeah uh, I'm programming it through AT Tiny. I don't have a serial connection right now. Can you see this? Mm -hmm. Okay. So you're you're using the FAP ISP. Yeah, and, FAP ISP. And, Connect that to the board, yeah. and then you yeah. have a FTDI cable. Do you use 3.3 yeah. volts or three or five volts? It's five volt cable. It's five volt cable. Yeah. Okay. okay. The five volts with the FTDI. Yeah. Okay. Five volts with the FTDI. Okay. Yeah, we can put on. Okay. Okay, uh, uh, far after I saw you are not serial taking room and check it out. Uh, what Okay, I'll skip the game And, uh, okay, this LED is, is an integer, and, and, uh, we are, are saying that it's number seven. And because we are working with, um, because we are working with, uh, uh the 80 tiny 44, we need an extra serial like a library so when when i am um, and that library has to go through this rx and tx normally when i am just working with arduino this serial is built in the chip the board so i would not need this code when i'm just working with arduino uno but for 80 tiny we need this we need a software serial, and we need to address which pins are RX and which pins are, are um, TX. So in this case, this is 80 tiny, uh, 80 tiny 44. That's a pin number 12, and in 80 tiny 44, TX is 30. Okay, and we need to say software serial RX and TX. So that and, connects and, this. And the RX. Uh that you define, it's always on the board, the RX or the board, isn't that true? Receiver yeah. on, yeah. Yeah, it's on the board. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that, that Ausdala, it's a reason why I can't see uh, the serial here. Do you know why? It's because I'm connected, I'm not connected to the board yet. I'm connected with, um, what you call it, uh, I'm connected now to the 80 tiny. The board is not connected to, to directly to my computer. 
See, it was it has it has another power source. So I'm going to take the tiny out. See now and the FAP ISP you mean? Yeah, I take the FAP ISP and I'm going to connect it now to this this here from 17. And now I have a running um, serial. So the so okay, take we, we will take a look at what is happening here. We are saying we are using this library, we are defining RX and TX, we are saying connect the, uh, this RX and TX to the library, and then we here we are uh, saying serial begin. So that will open the library. And then uh, we are saying pin mode, let this pin will be output. That's just about the let. And now here we are talking to the talking to the serial, sending the serial to what is happening here to the to the serial monitor. So let's imagine that we have some some let's say imagine that this pin here is a sensor. We say it's a sensor like like a light sensor. Okay, light sensor has an has an integer, and we will make another integer like read, yeah, but uh, uh, read but uh, sense s, Okay, this that doesn't the name doesn't matter, and we will say um, like this, and it's zero. Okay, we could uh, in the code in the loop we would need to let this read to, uh, we, we would say, take it a read, I'll read, okay, uh, okay, we, we, will, we will just say, read the sensor and, and change the sensor to this name, do you understand me? And then we, we could say, if we want to send something to serial print here, I would copy this, and we would want to send the value, this value that is here, copy, then you don't use the, uh, quite the guys are lapper and screw. Yeah, quotation. So we would read, we would send, we can send text. If we have this quotation, we will only send text. But if we don't have that uh, quotation, we would read the values that come in here. So, and, and in the serial here, because uh, the hello comes down, if we would not, if we would not, would have like it, like this print, and this, and then it would be like vertical. Uh, horizontal, it would just go to but this, yeah, a new line. So at len is a new line. <coughs> so that is helpful. Okay. Um, so we make integers to to do stuff like that. To and, and we use the serial for this. Serial for this hugely hugely important for us to read things and and check out stuff if if they work or not. What what reading are we getting and and, and so on. Okay, I'm going to go to another sketch and uh, cut this off. So, so this is uh, really important to to take a good look at the serial part. Okay, yeah, here is the thing I was uh, trying to do. It's so stressed, <laughs> huge pressure. Uh, there's so much silence from you, and uh, I'm stressing that. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, okay, okay. <laughs> Uh, because we we want to work with this um, with what we have on the hello world board. We want to work with um, we want to work with the button and we want to uh, work with the lab. I don't know if you have one or two lab on on your board, but if you have more than more than one lab, then you have just more things to do with your code. And okay, let's, let's go go through this code. Okay, we have an integer, and let's call Taki. And Taki is on pin three. Let's say this 
Sketch is for Arduino. It doesn't have the RX and GX thing, but it doesn't matter. You can always implement that or copy it to your sketch. Okay, and this sketch doesn't have any uh, serial th thing going on. Just for, for simplicity now. Okay, we are we have button on pin, and remember button is input. So button free pin mode Taki is an input. Because this is an input, Taki will be number three pin on the uh, on your board will be input. Uh, we have let, and that is an output. So pin mode let output. Okay, this thing. Then we are going to look. We will uh, start this up in, in the beginning, and then we are going to look in here. Okay, let's take a look at this. Uh, we have digital read. Yeah, okay, I didn't put the R off when I was doing this. Okay, we have digital read. That means read the button. That is number three. And when you have read it, listen to it constantly, uh, change that. Uh, what you read into Taki Pasti. So now everything is here, is reading, reading, reading the button, and we will change it to Taki Pasti. And we have already made an integer called Taki Pasti here. If that's zero. If we didn't have that, the code would just, uh, when we are like trying to compile the code here, it would not compile. It will ask, what is this? Okay, Taki is, no, is now Taki is now Taki Pasti. and we could have signal here from like zero or one. It only listen to it if it's zero or one. Okay, then we have a loop, and now we have the first loop. Inside this loop, we can have all kinds of loops in here, but this loop is called if if loop, and it says if Taki Pasti is not equal to zero, this means not equal to zero, then do something. If this Taki, Taki Pasti is not equal to zero, you do this. You execute what is inside this loop here. And we are executing digital write let high. It means send 5 volt to this pin, which is pin 3, pin 7. Okay, we are putting on the left. Okay, this is a, a loop, and be careful, you see this here? This, what happens inside this loop is, is the execution, like uh, the, the thing that, that, that is going to happen if this Haki Faste is not equal to zero. Okay? Then we have else loop, when this is not equal to zero, be here. And digital right let is low. So in this loop, uh, the microcontroller is stuck here until you, and it's waiting and waiting and waiting and waiting and waiting until you push the button, then it executes this line. Everybody understand this? Yes. Okay. Okay. Good. So, most of the time, when I have when I'm uh, writing code, I you for you you forget something, especially when you're doing it the first time. You f forget to close like things, like you uh, curly br bracelet. You you forget to close it, and the code and your compiler says, ah, okay, there's something wrong. Plus. I often forget this, semicomma. Remember, semicomma is only in the end of like this uh, execution or integer. It's not, the semicomma is not after uh, loops. Because this is what happens in the loop. This is what is going to happen in the loop. That That's what matters. So it's an integers and an execution of something. You, you're, you're doing something. That is, you, you need to put this in the Okay. And in the end, like if I take, take, click on this one, you can see this, close this, 
curly loop, this curly bracelet shows this, and this one shows this. So this loop, if loop and else loop are inside the void loop. That's the main loop, and you can put if loops inside that. You can also, if you when you start working in code more and more and more, you can put another if loop in here. Yeah, an, an if loop inside an if, if loop, and let it read other stuff and listen to other stuff. So it's and, and some code, and I will show you like a com really complicated code just in the end how how you put uh, loops inside loops. Okay, I'm going to turn this off. Uh, okay, uh, these codes you will share share that with with us. Or? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I I have already shared it because it's on the in on the no, we, will, uh, we, we will yeah, pay yeah. you <laughs> but i can i have a i i, I need to share the uh, code for the hello board the the rx and tx and thing thing, thing. Yeah, we have to take a look i have to share that i will find a way to share it okay uh, uh okay now we are going to talk about uh, uh a thing that you can do with your hello board a uh, little bit more complicated code. Um, so, 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 so. Okay, uh, this is a rather simple code to to work with your uh, button and your and your uh, uh, let. Uh, uh, this code is a little bit more. And uh, okay, I I talked about integers in the beginning. And we have different kinds of integers. And here is float. I don't know why it didn't come out in the beginning, but here it is, is float. And this is when we are uh, using float as an integer, we have more possibilities with uh, zero point 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 zero numbers. So it takes um, much more memory for your chip, but not, uh, yeah, but not, but but like in this code, we are not having troubles with memory. I can show you codes that we have troubles. We are getting really, we really need to think of to pack everything. So it's like your phone. You have filled your phone with uh, with data. Uh, microcontrollers they don't have much RAM. So we sometimes we need to be careful how much we put into the into the chip. But the Arduino IDE will always complain if, if we are using too much. Okay. Uh, okay. I, I, I'm going to talk about one thing. In, I will tell you a little bit about how to uh, set up the board regarding um, types of boards. But I will do that after, after this. Okay. We have... Now we have a uh, few integers here, and we and we are going to take a look at them. Float that we made a float here, and I'm going to float here to say um, it's uh, a time that we are going to hold the button down. So we want to measure it, and very very accurately. That's that's why we use float, and we we're, we're talking about milliseconds and 0.0, .0 milliseconds. Okay. Then we have another. And that say possibility one, and that is 100 milliseconds. Then we have a possibility two, and that is 2,000 milliseconds. What we are doing here with this code, we are using one button to do two different things. If we push the button very quick, then we will light up. When we will, then we will light up uh, this uh, RGB, uh, this LED, and we will light it up. Uh, LED, we have two LEDs. We have LED one and LED two. So we will light up this LED pin two. Uh, sorry, we are, this is uh, the LED, LED, LED pin one. Sorry, that, that's LED pin one. We will light it up uh, and and. And if we and, and possibility possibility two, if we will hold it for two seconds, when we will light up the other LED. Here is the one LED, LED one and LED two. Okay, let's take a better look at this. We need an integer. 
hold the button down to measure. This is an op uh, option one, 100 milliseconds, option two, 2000 milliseconds. And then is this just the button pin is number two. And this is, and this will of course be uh, an, an output, input, sorry, input. It will be an input. And LED pin will be an output, 13 LED and 12. Okay, we go to the setup. And here's a pin mode. And we are saying that Paki, the button pin, is an input. But what is this? Pull up. Why do we have this? Okay, this is if we don't have uh, a pull-up resistor on the button. Maybe I can go here better and take a look at... See, this is a pull-up resistor. A resistor on the button. We, then we can execute this in the code, and it will use the internal pull-up resistor. So, some pin, pins have internal pull-up resistors, but to use this, we have to go to the data sheet and check out if we have an internal pull-up resistor. Uh, there is... Yeah. Yeah, exactly, because yeah, definitely, because it's, it, it's, it's, a, it's a little bit hard for, for your microcontroller to read buttons, because you have a spike. And uh, we, I have used like a library, like a, a button library, special button library, to, to work with that. Because if you have many, many buttons and you are maybe kicking them on the, the same time, the microcontroller can have hard times. So I can't remember the name of the library, but I can I can find it. Okay, this button has a pull-up resistor here and pin mode. The LED one is output and LED two is an output as well. Here we have serial. Serial begin. We open a serial. Okay, now we are using different kind of loops. We are using while loop. So. Why? Because we could, the while loop can wait in the beginning, it can wait here. Right? So we are saying in the while loop, digital read this pin, that is, is the button pin. And digital read equal equal low. So while, while the, the pin is low, then you should execute uh, the things in here. And what is the, what is the, uh, what is happening here? It's just an, an account. It's just saying, saying, time uh, nidri equals to 100. So when you, when taki is down, it, it starts to count, start counting. And that count will go into this. It's the same as this one. So it's it's adding numbers in here. And I push and it starts one, two, three, four, five, six, I did it and counting and counting and counting. Okay. Then the loop is also has another function here. It says serial. So this is reading and reading and waiting and read waiting and waiting until you do something. When you do something, it will start counting. Okay, the serial print, print these words just ms milliseconds equals to something. Okay, uh, and then it's serial prints that count. Now we are, now we are sending to the serial, this here, this, uh, the values. If we are not doing nothing, the, the value will be zero. But as soon as we push the button, the values will be changing here, and we can see it in the serial monitor. Do you understand? Okay. 
Okay, now we have to add in the other uh, possibilities. So, if team Itaki Nidri, if this, if it is this, and it's also this, here is nothing happening, here is maybe something happening if we are pushing. So, if team Itaki Nidri here is bigger or equals to Möguleiki 2, Okay, what is Möguleiki 2? Possibility 2 is 2000 milliseconds. So, if T Mitakiniri is bigger or equal to this one, then execute this line. Uh, turn on left 2. Okay. If T Mitakiniri is equal uh, is bigger and or equal to Möleki 8. Let's take a look at Möleki 8. Möleki 8, possibility 1 is 100 milliseconds. Then run this one. Okay. In the end of the loop, you, you, you turned, because you pushed the button, the button got up. Let's say it's, it's 3000 or something. So this here is to zero it again. After everything, you have uh, released the button. You, you, we need to, we want to do it again. Like we want to push the button again, maybe. So, so what we do, this code, it's outside the if loop, and it will zero everything in regarding the time. So we are back here, this is zero, and we are in the this while loop, waiting is the digital read takipirni equal to low, if not, don't do anything. And if you would you uh, delete, yeah. the, delete the last zero, it would just always be on after the seconds. Yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely. Okay, so... Okay, um, I'm going to show you just a few codes, two uh, codes uh, maybe. Willi, Willi, uh, one, yeah. Willi, one question. Yeah. Uh, do you have the code? Like just in the beginning, like uh, how how uh, is it the same? No. Like how did you define that it was measuring time and not not something else? That is. We are not measuring. We are we are measuring like um, milliseconds. Uh, yeah, the yeah. Microcontroller, yeah. The microcontroller has uh, a few ways to measure. Uh, like the best way to measure time, if you want to measure be in time, then you need like a, uh, some kind of a um, hardware to do that. You, you know, not some kind of hardware. We, uh, we have it in here, but that's a real uh, real time clock. Yeah, I, I will. I will ask the question again in Icelandic. No. Yeah. Is it as you are spouting? What is the skill grade of the virus? Is it a team that is 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 a when you use delay in, in, in your code, like if we were using delay here, uh, delay, delay, sorry, delay, and we would say 1,000 milliseconds, and that is like for one, like a one second. So if you you already have that implemented, the millisecond system in your in your in Arduino, but if you need uh, like, like for instance, if we talk about the code in the Eltibekerin, it needed to know exactly uh, the, the, the millisecond and the minutes and the hours of the day. Then you need a real, real time module, real time clock, and that, that module has a battery and everything, and and then you can work with time. So there is also, you know, but. Time, like for code, 
it, it, it can be really, really hard sometimes to put in delays because, because when you put in delay, like I say, I, I, I put in delay here, I, and, and, and the delay, then the, the, the microcontroller is stuck here for the time. It, it goes, like we say, okay, delay here for, for 1,000 milliseconds, then the, the code is running and will be stuck there. But sometimes you can't use delay. Sometimes you, you have to use like mathematic, math, math, mathematical uh, star fry formula to, to, to do the delay or, or to do the, to, do the time. So you use uh, mathematics to do that. And I can show you that. Uh, okay, I, I, before we go into uh, all the connections, I want to show you uh, two codes. Um, okay. Like this is the uh, small team of us that takes a little time to open. But the, the, the delay can sometimes be hard. But if you want to have like a, a light on a on a left for a few seconds, it's, it's very easy. But if you put the delay in the loop and you are reading something, like some pattern or something, and the delay, it won't put the, put the light on unt until it has finished with the delay. Okay, I'm going to t show you this uh, sketch here, and I'm just going to uh, talk about a little bit about it. But uh, like here, we have a lot of integers. This is the active again. And, and we have uh, buttons, many buttons. Here are many buttons. And, and we have, like, uh, we are reading the buttons and we are, ha are getting uh, some states on it. So, so this is a little bit complicated way to, to read the button and also use the values in different things. So, um, so now this is... Okay, this is like a, a library for for your for LCD screen. It has an LCD screen, so we use library to run that thing. And it is connecting an LCD to uh, an Arduino is a complicated thing, so we need an extra code that is running behind. Um, we have a lot of pin mode going out and in. Inputs and outputs because the sensor is it's reading the, uh, the 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 environment. And here are patterns with pull up. Okay, this here, <laughs> but this is a funny code. This is a uh, booting. Such a nice booting, thing. but it's a fake booting. It's just <laughs> it's just showing oh, some oh, oh. cool stuff on the screen. <laughs> just saying, okay, we are putting, and it takes a lot of time, and we are, yeah, we are a really big computer, and you just have to wait. <laughs> 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 but it, it takes like a millisecond to put, like, <laughs> and then activate it. It's ready. We can we can go, go do something. Um, after this, two milliseconds. And now, <laughs> and now we have the uh, the something going on. The ultrasonic sensor, the big sensor that is on the front, is like reading and checking. Okay, I'm here. I'm checking. I'm checking. I'm checking. Uh, the infrared is are reading and checking. And uh, this is some patterns. Yeah, this is some pattern value. Uh, and then now we have um, this is a distant. Yeah, and now we have the actual code. And now here are we sending uh, stuff to to serial print. If if something is happening in this uh, distant sensor, a ultrasonic sensor, then it says it sends something on the screen. Okay, we have a hindrance, hindrance at front. So it's it clears the screen here, and then it say okay hindrance, uh, and hindrance, and and after that it has said that do something. So this is sensing. The ultrasonic sensor, and it has an obstacle, and it says in the serial, there's an, there's an obstacle, but now it's executing. Okay, I have to send some information to the motors. I need to back off. I need to back off, and I need to turn, and I need to turn and go, then go on again, forward again, or nothing, or do nothing with this thing. So... 
this is this is a whole lot of code, a loop after loop. This is a another sensor, infrared scenery, on the left. And we had two uh, in, in coming in left and right. So when that is sensing something, it's not, it's high, then it's execute this, or else do nothing. Infrared right, or else. So now we have the uh, main loop for for the main main loop for the motors, and this is like if uh, if we have value between something, then you have to do some to uh, uh, execute something, and that is this this thing running the motors forward. Okay. Uh, so so you can have like many 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 loops going on. Uh, and this is something about the screen. This is uh, 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 about the clock, because we had a real-time clock, and we, that's a, a library plus a an hardware. And here we can like work with uh, with that. Like here we are sending the months to the serial, not to the serial. I am sending to the LCD screen. Okay, this works. When we are working with LCD, it works exactly like sending something to serial monitor. You know what I mean? It's just a different here in the beginning. We are just sending the month to the serial monitor, but we are sending to the to the LCD screen instead. Did you use normal Arduino in this, or? I used Arduino Mega. Mega, yeah. Yeah. Okay, before we go to the connection, I'm going to talk about a little bit about uh, one thing, and then we, go, we we take a look at the connections. Uh, uh, this like is one, the code. One question about that, like when you're using uh, Arduino Mega and or like we are uh, going to use AT Tiny, uh, do we need to change the libraries, or because you were probably no. there using some kind of shield, or? No, you don't have to change the libraries. You have the libraries, but but some libraries maybe will not uh, work with uh, with your hardware but uh, but like like now uh, most of the libraries will work like libraries to to help you run motors libraries to help you run uh, run uh, the serial and like yeah you could of course end up with some something some trouble but but we are talking about most of the same is in Arduino, like 80 mega is in Arduino, so it's almost the same. Yeah. If you're using the 80 tinies, they have like a little bit less opportunities to do, do some do stuff, but but you are only using 80 tinies for really simple projects, like reading something as a slave or or something. So I would not have worries about libraries not working with them. Uh, and, and yeah, okay, sorry. Okay. Uh, this is the code for uh, the the Keta, and I'm not going to go through it. But we the, the, here here is like a really really complex uh, things going on because we had to use array uh, and uh, there is a lot of things like you can use to 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 calculate things more deeply like um, there is something called array and uh, and then you can use numbers like many many numbers in a like a, in a box like let's say we just put many many numbers in a box and we can use that numbers um, part of that numbers and and in, in so many different way ways with arrays and uh, and and I, and and I want to address you one thing. Like this here is an array also. Like I want to address you. If you take a look at this code, uh, uh, you, you take a look at this code and you see how important serial is. Because here is serial begin, and we are on this uh, bit rate. Uh, you can see serial, serial. They're all over the code. Okay. Now see no serial. <laughs> okay, here is serial, serial print line, serial, serial. We are always sending something to the serial because we need to see what is going on. 
what is going on in this loop when this when he's executing this and this doesn't take much space so so check uh, put the serial on always and 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 have it in your code it's hugely important for 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 the for your bug fixing fixing bug, bug fixing and, and and fixing code that is not working okay uh, now I'm going to talk about uh, like different kind of different kind of uh, settings. Um, we have I told you that we have libraries, and we can get libraries from the internet, and and to add them, sometimes we add them like put them here in file and preferences here, and we need to put. Uh, some kind of web link in here and i would rather not i always delete them but i don't you don't have to delete it if you have a new link just put it below and say okay it's better to have them integrated okay when you have put them in here the link if you've got a library link sometimes you don't have library link sometimes you have it as a physical files and i'll show you how to put them in so this is you can put in library link here when you've done that, you go to tools and you go to uh, managing libraries here. When you have put the link in, you go to tools and managing libraries. And this open up and then you look for it. It, it, it can be a little bit uh, long like work, but it's, uh, you have to give it, give it time. And then you put uh, your name of your library here, like uh, ATP Tiny tiny or, or something uh, and then you find it and you install it here install when you have installed your library let's say like li library for 80 tiny then you can when you're no it's okay then you then i want to like i have this code it's already i i have pushed on variation here and i and the code works and then i go to tool and, I, and here I can change the board. Okay. If I was, I have many, many boards here. So it's it, when you open uh, Arduino in first time, you have a fewer. So like, for instance, if I was using Arduino Uno, I would click here. Okay, sorry. It takes a little bit to process for the Arduino. Arduino Uno. Then I have to choose the port. And it usually give you the port when you put the, the USB cable in. And mine is here on COM7, but I don't have Arduino connected. Okay, then I need to take a look at the programmer. And this is hugely important. Nothing will work unless you have the right programmer. We were using ATI Tiny just a minute, a few minutes ago, but in this case we would use Arduino as ISP. So. This is Arduino, your port. If you can't find your port, go to a device manager and take a look at if your Arduino gets in. Okay, uh, this is the programmer. And we are not, we are not turning full solder. Okay, sorry. Okay. Sorry. Uh, no, 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 no. Uh, yeah, I use this. Uh, uh, this as the the, uh, the ISP is. It, it, it was. It always worked with me as a as as an. Uh, you can also use this yeah, one. Arco, Arco, you know. it, it, they both work. Yeah, they both work. Yeah, I, ISP and as, as, that's that's correct. That's good. Good point, Ali. Okay. Uh, now I'm going to change it back to some some other microcontroller like. 80 tiny, like 80 tiny. Then, I've, when you have load your li uh, 80 tiny library here, this will be here. 80 tiny 44. Or 80 tiny. I will I will pick 80 tiny. It takes a little while, okay. And now I have different options. Okay, this is the board. The, the they just say okay, you have a board with 80 tiny, and then you have to pick the processor. Many times you forget, okay, I have picked 80 tiny, but I didn't pick the right processor. I was going to pick 80 tiny 44. 
That, 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 that sometimes I can see that. Okay, then you have external clock. And when you are made your board, you uh, picked an external clock. In this, in this case, external clock is 20 uh, megahertz. Could be fewer. Could be is it, but isn't so. that only if we add uh, crystal or resonator? Yes. Only if you add the crystal, yes, and resonator. But in, in, in the newer uh, microcontrollers, that's uh, built in. They are built in, so you can choose, but you can't choose here. Do you have that 16.14 uh, uh, library there? Because uh, I see you're using the 44, but uh, I saw there was a 16 something. Isn't it 16.14 yeah, uh, we're using? Yeah, I have it as well. I have that, that much here, yeah. And I, I'm going to finish this setup. Yeah, yeah, uh, this is, yeah, this is uh, the port. And, and I need to, of course, use another programmer. Uh, I, uh, Fab ISP, uh, USB Tiny in this case. So this could run now, this board could run. Okay, then I'm going to add, uh, like, to take a look at other, other microcontrollers. Like, and, before, uh, before, I, sorry, Willi, before you do that, no. uh, do we need to start on a burning bootloader? I'm trying to remember that. Yeah, if you... If you are if yeah, programming that for very the first good, time. very good. If you are programming your board for the first time, you need to burn bootloader. And what is a bootloader? It's a program that uh, starts up first in your microcontroller, and it runs the program that it should run. Mm. It's like in your phone. When you start your phone, it it, it puts on on the right program when you so, start it. But uh, quest. Yes, yes, yeah, exactly. What, what, what I'm wondering, like, if I start using, like, for example, Linux and the traditional AVR, uh, put it to the microcontroller, then I want to go to the uh, Arduino environment. Do I have to do burn the bootloader again? Or? No, never burn the bootloader, bootloader in Arduino. It's already burned. It's already there. No, I, yeah, I'm, meaning, I'm meaning if I'm going doing that through the Arduino environment. If I'm... If I'm uh, yeah, you you have to you have to like okay if you're if you're taking a completely new chip that's never been used before you have to burn bootloader. Yes, but if I have programmed it early, already in Linux, you never you only burn bootloader once. Once, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, when you do sorry when you. Is yeah, 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 if, if you yeah, I, if you use another uh, if you use, uh, use another platform, are you, are yeah, you yeah, asking yeah. that? That, that was yeah, my question yeah. originally, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I, I, I have never, uh, I have no experience in that. Yeah, okay, okay. 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 But but I, think uh, the, some, I think the flash, flash yeah, okay, sorry. Some, some uh, microcontrollers come like uh, with a bootloader, but, but not all. And then, then it's you, you. Yeah, they have bootloaders. Yeah, yeah. Because I didn't burn a bootloader with, with the one I, I did. It was already already uh, built in. Okay. Uh, okay. Next, I'm going to take a look at. Oh, okay. Um, before we go to uh, another uh, con pin con uh, the settings for for the like uh, tiny. I call it tiny mecha 1614. I I like to talk about uh, where you put your libraries. Let's say you download a library, and there is one thing about uh, the thing I did. I was confused in the beginning. What is the difference between a library and an example? Okay, example, you can find it here. File and example. Example is just Arduino codes, pre-coded to do something. They are just, okay, if I open like uh, some code over here, like... Mm, uh, let's say what to do. 
some, okay, here is a code to control something, some switch, okay? So, example is just Arduino codes or sketch. This is called sketch. So, it's no different from this. This sketch, this is a sketch and this is a sketch. So, libraries and examples. I was confusing, confused in the beginning what, what was what. And you can find them. And sometimes, when you download li libraries, you also get um, these examples. Like if you download a library about uh, connecting to uh, like uh, LED strips, like fast LED library, you get a lot of examples, cool examples to run, run uh, LED strips. But you don't see them unless you put them in the right folder. So uh, this is when I get libraries physically, I download them from like um, not physically, I download them <laughs> digitally. <laughs> I download them from from GitHub or something. I get files. So the library files they will go to my uh, my PC and documents and in Arduino here and libraries. So you add your library in here, and I have a lot of libraries. You can see. So, so like, uh, yeah, here's one, and I can open one library maybe. This is some uh, NeoPixel library. So the example, this is the library here, and this is examples. And they are just codes so that, that you can open. OK. So this is libraries, and you put them in here, in uh, documents in Arduino. If you want. If you want to uh, also see the examples here, here is examples, then you have to put the example folder in this PC, and I have to go to the root where where my, um, I think this is here, program files, and you have to find Arduino, Arduino, and you put examples here. And this is what you can see in the program. So you have program, uh, your root program files and put the examples in here. You can also put libraries in here, but I never do. Because ne I, I would never put libraries in here. Because when uh, you have to upgrade, you have to delete your uh, former, uh, former uh, Arduino. And this folder will be deleted. But the folder in documents will not be deleted. This document folder, Arduino, this will never be deleted by your uh, unsetup program. OK, now we're going to take a look at things. OK, libraries and examples. Examples are just Arduino codes. Uh, tools board okay you were talking about uh, the new chips the uh, 80 tiny okay 80 tiny i'm going to choose 1614 like this i have downloaded the library and, and i can open it here and this is not easy because you have many many options still, still loading okay now you see the options okay we will we can uh work we need the board, and we are uh, selecting this. And we are, have to select the chip that we're using, 1614, this one. Okay, it's, it's selected. Wait. Then we have a whole lot of things to choose from. This is re really important, the clock speed. But now we don't have one clock speed. We can use all of them. And... What if I would use one megahertz clock speed, the, the board will be slow. It will be executing things really, really slow. <laughs> Go to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> no, it will be executing slow. But it will uh, not use as much power as... So this could be like if we were sensing th something like a hot top in your summer uh, house, we would just want it to execute a read the 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 temperature of the water like every hour or so or every 15 hours every uh, 30 minutes 
So this would be good for the computer, just read it slow, be slow, and use very little uh, electricity. So this is a... Um, yes, especially good, yes, especially. Uh, then we have things that you don't have to think about. This is like things that you uh, don't have to think about, but this one is... Um, uh, uh, because, uh, Frosty, you talked about time. And you can add this to your code, like milliseconds here, and you can have it like calculating milliseconds differently than uh, with a normal uh, calculation in your clock. So this is a different type to, to uh, maybe there is something to need to be on other time that something else in the code. Let's say we are measuring time and we want to measure time differently with, with some other object. So this is a thing that we can enable. Uh, it's a, 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 a thing to work with clocks. Uh, 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 but it takes a lot of power. Uh, if you're not using uh, milliseconds uh, with something like really deep, I would just disconnect this, disable this. And then we have a lot of things going on here. Um, we have special uh, special things, special pins in this uh, this chip that that works really good with like neo pixel libraries. So if you are, for example, uh, controlling a lot of LEDs with with uh, with one or two pins or few pins, you could use this pins pin configuration. So this is all options to work with different kind of things. But you need to consider this. This is, of course, your serial port, so your computer can read the, the uh, have a commun communication to your, to your board. And the programmer, uh, then it gets like, okay, uh, I am using uh, this programmer for, because I don't know the, the, the other programmer Pavlov has made, I have to make it someday. But now I have only this one. And this is the setting for that. It's changing some, some JTAG uh, to UPTI. So I changed my Arduino to UPTI, UPTI. And it only uses one pin. One pin, UPTI pin, and this is a ground pin. And but not to use... Sorry. Sorry? Uh, but do you need to use, like, I see you have the small one, Arduino Mini. Can you use a normal Arduino for that? Or? Uh, you can use a normal Arduino with that that has a megachip. Okay. Uh, that's somewhere in the middle. Uh, uh, we have, like, the long chip is not going to work. The long, uh, there, unless it's Atmeca. Uh, I don't have Arduino. Many things on my desktop. 80 Mega 328 or something like that. Could we use that? Yeah, it's very similar to that. All, all 8 Mega will work. Like this will not, not work. Okay. Yeah, and I was very sad because this, I have a lot of this new, uh, and this chip will not work. But 8 uh, Mega, yeah, Arduino with 8 Mega. This will okay. not work. At you, you just had to test it. But, uh, and, and read about it. I, uh, there is a lesson to do that. Okay, so this is the, the program I'm using. So the, uh, the assignment that you have, I can share, we can share the code, we will share the code and send a link to you, and I will add uh, the code, this code, this is really important code for, for your assignment this week, because you will be able to uh, use the serial. TX and RS, and, uh, and, and all the codes in here, um, Arduino lessons, and it's on, isn't it, the, uh, uh, Frosty, it's, we put it on the, 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 the Google Drive. The Google Drive, yeah, the Google Drive. And so this is uh, the button, Taki let, it's, it's uh, uh, exercise number 0, 0 0.3, and you can, open the codes and see what is going on. And if you want to take it further, you can read about while loops and, 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 and add serial. So you have to combine this code to do something more with your board than just blink the LED. You have to use do something with the button. 
Yeah. And if you add dynamite to it, that would be even more cool. If you blow something up, that would be really, really nice. You get extra credit for that. 